Hey everybody and welcome to episode 3 of Pack Unleashed. I'm Dominic and I'm joined as always by John and Matt. And today we're going to be talking about everything 80s. So we've got film, music, fashion and even products. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned. So why are we talking about all things 80s, Dom? Lay it on me, brother. Well, first of all, we were all born in the 80s. And other than that, we we were just born with a passion for all things 80s. I know I was. I just came straight out wearing some neon. <laughs> and had a straight out of the room. <laughs> yeah. The neon Basically, socks. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. Oh, the orange Hold one and the board. green one. Do you remember? The orange and green neon socks. The, the mixed yeah, the, pair. The, the mixed ones, yeah. I like it. I like it. I think, it, I think it's important to uh, it's important to cover this theme and this topic early on because basically, you know, as you get to know us, you'll get to know that that yeah, the eighties has definitely had an influence on on a lot of the stuff that we do, a lot of the stuff that we talk about. You know, right down to you know our recent kind of branding of pack is very much inspired by a lot of that decade. The, the decade has a lot to answer for in our lives, doesn't it? Hmm. We are going to tie yeah, this definitely. into some sort of knowledgeable, insightful topic. This is what Don, yes. John is definitely trying to tell us here. There, there's yes, yeah, there's yeah. going to be oh, some too, bombs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that too. Insight I feel like there, there will be some insight for sure. There will be some insights. Yeah. But well, mostly, good, most, most, but most, <laughs> mostly, but mostly just AE stuff. So, you know, <laughs> it's going to be fun. Things. It's going to be fucking epic. <laughs> so epic. So how do so we, how, how do, how do we start? Because I know, I know for this episode, we did talk a little bit about, you know, what part of the eighties we could talk about or, you know, because obviously there's, there is a lot, I feel like there's a lot to cover right from the films that kind of came out, the the games, like all the products that were released in the 80s, which I'm sure all of us at some point can relate to, right down to things that, you know, we individually felt were quite influential. So I think one of the things we, we sort of said to each other, didn't we, was, okay, pick one thing that you think perhaps maybe you remember a lot or, you know, that you can relate to now even. And for me, I think there was lots of stuff. So I actually found that quite, quite difficult. So yeah. I don't know about you guys. Did you, did you have any standout moments that you were like, this is the product or this was the thing that really inspired me? Yeah, I think, I think you know, for this, for, for this topic, I think one of the things that, like, like you said, that we wanted to talk about was things that kind of inspired our childhood and maybe, and maybe that we, we kind of look back on now and think, okay, you know, that's quite interesting. You know, I, now that we're adults, just about, <laughs> at least age-wise. Debatable. <laughs> Mentally, I'm not so sure. You know, you've got a different spin on stuff. And actually, up until recently, we've been sharing a studio, I will name no names. Merlin, who uh, who was basically um, not an '80s fan, and that was difficult, wasn't it? <laughs> he was like, I was actually there. Guys. Yeah, well, I guess I wasn't a baby in the '80s, and and it wasn't so great. And we were like, you know, hence why we're not sharing a studio anymore. I think, um, <laughs> but, but that was but that was probably because he had a mullet and some awful '80s clothes. Yeah, um, exactly. Was, you know. He probably exactly. he probably didn't have the best yeah memory of it. He's embarrassed about it, I think. But um, yeah, He's embarrassed I, about the mullet. <laughs> I think for me, yeah, I still very much, I still very much love that decade and love so much of it. You know, even down to the kind of intro music on the podcast. It's like you know when we were choosing it, Don was like, it's got to have some synths in it. It's got to have some kind of eighties <laughs> vibes. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 definitely something that we that we hark back to a lot. Yeah. As a company, right down to you know, we've given presentations based around Rocky Four <laughs> to a room full of people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's happened. And, uh, <laughs> and the Karate Kid. Yeah, and and we've created a workshop based on the Karate Kid, mm-hmm. the original one, not the uh, not, not the remake, remake. the 2010 remake, the dodgy oh. remake, <laughs> the one that um, was meant to be called. I think it, they said it was meant to be called the Ninja Kid or something, and it was it was meant to not hold any kind of resemblance to it whatsoever but it turns out it was pretty much the same storyline yeah, it's basically <laughs> the same storyline basically the same Ninja story it doesn't line, have does the it? same ring to it really does it yeah. i know it's it like very it's like non, non-specific kind of you know yeah, yeah. they're like let, they were like bugger that let's just call it the same thing uh, yeah, it turned just, out. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, let's start with products, right? Because there's a lot of good products in the 80s. Or, oh, man, so yeah. many. So what, what do you remember? You know, this, it could be anything. It could be a vehicle, what, could be a, I, a piece of tech. Personally, I remember, I mean, and it's partly done because obviously when you're a kid, you know, you're, well, most kids anyway, are very much into like gaming. So for me, like one of the standout things of the 80s was kind of towards the end of the 80s was the Game Boy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Absolutely. I bought one of those that. recently, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's a prime example, you know, of, of something that you kind of retain right through to now that you still, you know, felt. Yeah, I never, I never had one back in the day. And then I got kind of Game Boy MB. Yeah. So, oh man, just so good. And then the Mega Drive, obviously, that came out sort of late eighties, and that mm. again was just like phenomenal. That was like one of the first. That was definitely one of the first personal computers that I got. Until then, I was probably playing on my neighbor's um, a Commodore or something. But yeah, Mega Drive for me again. Yeah. Star out moment. Yeah. So, I remember getting a Mega Drive 2 for Christmas. That was uh, that was a good year. So I was, was I was year. a proper geeky geek. I used to, I remember having a 186 computer that like ran the worst computer games ever. Like you I literally I was like 8 years old like messing around with the con uh, auto exec dot files and and setting up virtual memory to play like Space Quest 1. And I had all these weird Sierra like <laughs> typing games, which were the most frustrating thing. Space Quest was the example, right? You had, it was like one of those games where you had to like, it, it, the equivalent would be a point and click adventure now. But in those days, it was like a, you use the arrows to walk the little 2D character about, and then you have to type the exact thing in to like open a door that the program has done. So I think I spent like a year trying to open like the second door to the second room and I typed the wrong right. thing. And because it wasn't like the American thing, like, like press the button on the console or something like that. Oh, I couldn't gosh. get anywhere. I had to buy a guide. That, Unbelievable. And then Leisurely Suit Larry, which I probably shouldn't be paying at the age of around 10. Yes, Never. I remember that. I remember that. Do you remember, yeah. uh, you know, games used to come on tape cassettes as well, didn't they, with some of those early... Um, yeah, yeah. And just the, I think one of the things that strikes me about that stuff now is how <laughs> present you had to be, right, in the uh, in the moment, because it's not like these days where you just, you want to play something, uh, it downloads and, and instantly it's, it's kind of there. You used to have to wait, maybe if you died in a game, you used to have to wait like maybe 10 minutes for the cassette. Mm. <laughs> to, you used to have to rewind it <laughs> to, to, <laughs> yeah. to play another round of Golden Axe or whatever, you know, and then you yeah. used to have to go through that... <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember that being one of the most frustrating things that you couldn't save it. So if you died, yeah, you'd have to go right back to the beginning and you're like, oh. Exactly. exactly. But you just did it though. You just did it and then you spent hours playing on it. I, I, do you know what I love? I love like how some of this stuff just hasn't gone away. So for instance, like the save icon, right? That's basically a three and a half inch, three and a half inch disc. Like my kids would have yeah. no clue what that means. It's just, oh, that's save. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, what's that? I remember the 5.25 floppies, 12 of those bad boys to install the game. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, they're absolutely huge. Literally floppy disks, like like they've melted. What is that you've got? So for the people at home who can't see this, have you, have you drawn out a... Uh, I wondered what was going on in the background. You scribbling away. You've got a Batman uh, logo going on there. Oh, well, it just shows you how good at design I am, actually, because that was a mouth, but it's all right. Oh, yeah, I can see. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought it was a, I thought it was a Batman symbol as well. It does, no, no, you say it. It's just... a bit like a Batman symbol. I think it's the orange I was just like, I was just thinking, oh, bless him, he doesn't know how to draw that well. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true, to be fair. <laughs> no, but now, now you said it's a mouth, that's even better. <laughs> uh, Amazing. Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, so, what, what about you, Matt? You... What, what, uh, what from that from that decade do you remember the most? What? Uh, Ooh, I, I don't know. Can you feel a warm and fuzzy? I mean, I, I was born like literally 1980, so I got to experience 10 years of that that era as, as like a tiny, oh. tiny person. And I think for me, do you know, like films played a lot in it, computer games played yeah. a lot in it. I, I think. Monkey Island was one of the defining, I suppose, games of my youth at that sort of time and age. Was it 80s? Monkey Island 80s? I'm sure I think, that's yeah, a further. A, a, a I don't know. End. It feels like the top yeah. end of the 80s. Yeah. That, that kind of humour, I think, in, in that type of media really appealed to me at that time. And I think, again, being such a different decade, and I feel it was a lot kind of a less safe and a lot freer 
you know, just just all of that kind of stuff, I think, kind of shapes shapes you in a complete... I mean, it's the same with any generation, isn't it? You look back now and you basically say the yeah. same thing that old people said before us. Oh, you don't know how we, you had it. You know, we had to do all this stuff. We had to wait 15 minutes for our computer games to load and, you know... <laughs> Back in the wall. In the, that's basically, that's like the equivalent, actually, isn't it? Of like, I had to walk to school for like two miles in the snow. It's like, yeah. oh, I had, I had like a 56k yeah. dial up download. I had, I had to wait 10 <laughs> minutes to get one JPEG down. You don't know how good you've got it today. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah, it's true. So I, think, true. I think overall it's, it's funny, like the, the film and the sense of humour and that kind of very 80s thing of like the good guy always comes in as a struggle, as a slight outlier and then, you know, kind of does the right thing and saves the day and, and, and then that kind of mm. epic montage to, you know, high five end oh, is... Oh, he said the M word. Oh, oh, montage. Gosh. Let's talk about montages because this this was part of the inspiration behind our Karate Kid design thinking workshop was that, you know, the whole... I think there's, there was, there was a, a thing in the 80s um, and a lot of kids that kind of grew up there where in movies especially, basically to cut out a load of kind of storyline and dialogue, they just stick a montage in, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's, like, that's the kind of like the karate kid generation is like, okay, you know, kid who doesn't really, you know, learning karate out of book, he's pretty crap, right? Goes to see a sensei, you know, learns karate good enough that he wins like, you know, the local championship or whatever with kids that have been doing it for years and years and years. Uh, how are we going to convey that? We're going to stick in a montage in, basically, you know, and it's just a little bit of progression each time, you know, and that is part of that workshop that we put together that we did at Product Tank back last November now was was just, you know, kind of taking that idea of a montage. So you don't really know in a montage what you're doing or why you're doing it. You know, you're doing loads of different things. Karate Kid's a great example of that. You know, yeah, it's yeah. the ultimate montage example. So it's like he's waxing on, he's waxing off, he's painting the fence or whatever. And it's not until that epic scene where Miyagi's like, oh, no, Daniel's son. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Miyagi impression coming up. Oh, no, <laughs> I keep going with this. I want to see where this goes. Please, please don't Daniel stop son, now. Listen, paint the fence, you know, and he's just like, oh, oh, oh. You know, and it's um, and it's that like racism in there as well. Nice, pack unleash, unleash, <laughs> unleash the pack. Um, you know, suddenly he's doing all these things that he's been doing, you know, out of context basically. And he's been, yeah, that's a lot of product design is like that, isn't it? It's kind of like, you know, oh, we need to do this before we do that, and we need to, you know, do this, that, and the other, and kind of, you know, you don't always know why you're doing these tasks and you don't always know you know why you're repeating the same actions and, and coming up with a formula and you know mm. tweaking things and getting things better until there's this kind of moment of clarity which you get in the karate yeah, kid, which is a big like, reveal yeah and it's the same in the matrix isn't it although he kind of cheats and gets kung fu <laughs> uploaded into his brain yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the that's 90s like, that's the 90s difference to the 80s a, the instantaneous yeah yeah, I don't like that. You know, the eighties was more gritty. You know, you had a montage. If you're in Rocky, you got to go up to the mountains and pull a log for at least two minutes through the snow. You know, and that's that's good enough, right? You can pull a log. It's quite inspirational as well, isn't it? I mean, it kind of like I, I think if you were really into that type of stuff, then like you know, A Team similar, Rocky similar. You know, it's almost like you can learn anything or you can do anything. All you've got to do is just practice for a really short time and then you can be a master yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, yeah. think yeah. Say, I think there's something really say really <laughs> kind of cool about that that kind of is quite empowering in the way that you know it, it is you know pretty much anything you can do you just have to sort of like try and i think yeah. i definitely like took a lot of that yeah, yeah that was definitely the message of the 80s was just like anyone can do anything if you try hard enough and you apply yourself you know and we're going to show you that in a condensed two to three minute montage with a song over the top that spells out what's going on in the story as well which i love so it's like yeah. i used to be crap at karate <laughs> now i'm trying really hard and i'm getting better oh, each day i really see i see that there's some sort of music video 
coming out here for the pack. Really. Oh, just like, yes. The pack montage video to take oh, away, definitely. you know, that, that, that one that we got at the top of the website already. Let's just Where's replace that with the that? montage. Where's my headband at? <laughs> oh my God, we should so do that. We could be running in an airfield and have like smoke machines blowing oh, giant mullets. Amazing. Yeah, oh, just blowing like post-it notes on fire towards us. All right, we're doing this now. <laughs> this, this is happening. The post-it Mic note drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think a lot i think uh i think a lot you know I, I think the whole montage thing you know it didn't it just didn't it just felt right back then you know and i think um oh, man it still feels right now i feel like, right yeah, i feel yeah. like a lot of films these days are missing a good montage yeah for sure man for sure and i agree with what you were just saying about that i think i think one of the reasons we you know a lot of some of the best products out there are launched is because a lot of people are naive to these things and they think they can just put them out there and they'll <laughs> yeah. do well so actually yeah. You know, whether whether or not that's a direct result of eighties montages or not, I'm not sure. But there's definitely a connection there. <laughs> we need to do some surveys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if you if Were you, you try... born between 1980 and 1985, <laughs> yeah, you know, just give it a go. Who gives a fuck if it doesn't work? You know, that's the kind of attitude, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. One of the things, actually, when when we were talking about this subject, you know, when we're chatting about the themes and stuff that sprang to mind for me was a particular famous car from the 80s and matt i know i was talking to you just the other day about this so you'll know where i'm going with this i'll give you a clue it's silver it goes 88 miles an hour <laughs> and it's got silver doors that open like this oh for oh, ford uh for mustang the delorean the delorean oh, yeah. so good so, so good. good so i remember as a kid in the 80s i think itv or something must have bought the rights a to rocky four because i remember that being on pretty much every week basically <laughs> yeah. when i was a kid <laughs> know it so well i didn't i didn't even realize there was another 16 rockies or whatever until i was growing <laughs> i was growing up and then i was like oh it's not just this one um and the other thing is like every christmas they used to show back to the future Christmas Day for some reason, yeah. which is weird because it's not a particularly, it's not a Christmas film in any oh, way, it's, shape it's, or form. It's the ultimate feel-good family film though, isn't it? It's the which got yeah, slightly inappropriate family. at number two. And I remember my mum yeah. never used to let me watch number two because there was big boobs <laughs> in it. But apart from that... Oh, I thought you would. I, I thought you were referring to him falling in love with it, or his mum falling in love with him. Yeah, that's all a bit weird. Although that was the all first bit, one, but it just works. It just works. But the car in that, you know, I've just, I've always been obsessed with with the DeLorean and what, um, you know, I think because they're so they're so ridiculous um, and they're so as a product and stuff. And I, recently, and I, I'd really love to do a bit more kind of a bit of a DeLorean special because I think there's some great stuff in there about that but um the delorean was created by a guy called john delorean basically and he was a big car exec who That's decided such an epic name so i know I'm, I'm thinking of changing my surname to delorean actually <laughs> myself but he was a he was a big car exec and decided to go it alone and uh, and create his his affordable like sports car basically and um i recently watched the documentary called framing john delorean which interestingly has um oh what's his name alec baldwin playing john delorean right oh, and it's, nice. it's like part documentary part kind of like reenactment and um and it's really interesting actually and and it really reminded me of like elon musk because they've got this scene in there where he's doing like this like unveiling of the DeLorean and they're pulling the blanket off it and then the doors go up and stuff and it's <laughs> really like the kind of recent Tesla kind of um, pickup truck that yes. basically looks like it's out of an 80s video game doesn't it? So they definitely took inspiration from that yeah sure. absolutely absolutely I mean and the I main think... the main difference being though that Elon Musk products work well I mean the DeLorean yes. is famous <laughs> famous for <laughs> not not always starting <laughs> <laughs> and I think the thing is, this is this is this is nostalgia for you, isn't it? This is where nostalgia kind of clouds your judgment because I know they're a piece of shit. I know that they're just they're awful and they don't work and 
but I want one so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> I have definitely got a few on my watch list on eBay. And they're like 30 grand, do you now? But um, yeah. So I mean, they, what I'm going to ask you there, though, is yeah. do they actually look like the DeLorean from Back to the Future or do they just look like the DeLorean? No, it just looks like a DeLorean, you know. Right. It's, you know, it's not got... They, funnily enough, Dom, they don't actually run on plutonium or... <laughs> what? <laughs> banana skins or whatever they can. I do always remember being really underwhelmed, actually, when I saw the DeLorean without all the Back to the Future stuff on it, because obviously that was the first exposure to it. And then you see the bog standard one without the sort of the toilet paper rolls stuck down the side of it and (laughs) and the little cheese wedges on the boot. And it it was quite (laughs) underwhelming, to be honest. But that clear coat, oh, the clear coat over the stainless steel is just... That is Ooh. that is a that is an exterior car. Don't get me started talking about cars. This could go a completely different direction. <laughs> it's an amazing product. I think what what amazed me about that story, and I think we should touch on this again, is just it's like I don't know if it could have happened in any other decade. And I think that's the other thing about the eighties, which is mm. really which is really funny now looking back on it, is it was a very like money rich like you know do what you want kind of you know hard-nosed decade or it's certainly portrayed that way yeah definitely movies and media and stuff like that and um you know i mean it's just a it's a ridiculous car it's a ridiculous product you know but but it just worked in that decade and this guy you know he's an incredible guy if you could watch this documentary you know he went from like a family man to just this like yuppie type guy he he had like a implant implant put in his chin to to make his jawline stronger and stuff and i was like (laughs) when else would you have done that except i don't know that wouldn't have been in the in the 90s that wouldn't have been acceptable i think he even wore shoulder pads and stuff to make himself more broad and you know it's just like everything about it i do that i do that yeah Yeah. (laughs) me too i'm wearing some now actually um very uncomfortable but worth it but just for the audience at home john was flexing his muscles right there on the spot he was he was showing us the gun show <laughs> top it. gun you could say so i think there's only there's only certain things that you know you look at and you think that has got to be from the 80s because you oh know, yeah just if you that. say delorean you instantly think 80s don't you yeah but just even if you don't name drop it you know if you just see something and you think god that's got to be 80s because look at it it's all like boxy and it's got like lights mm. on it and it's got this and it's got that it's just got that certain feel and that certain like yeah we can do it you know excessive kind of yeah it felt like it was design. it sort of from even the style you know like in the fashion and stuff it, it sort of i felt like there was a bit of an influence for like the punk era that kind of came into the 80s because everyone was sort of wearing slightly weird obscure clothing definitely neon everything was as neon men decided it was okay to wear leather pants yeah and grow their hair really long and wear makeup it was still kind of acceptable <laughs> yeah man and that what about that single leather glove just one leather glove with like the uh, what like the mj glove you mean <laughs> yeah we're just like just like with the fingers cut off that's um that's that's definitely a thing it was definitely a look wasn't it Definitely. I don't know if if i was to go back in any year and think would i choose the 80s for clothing i'm not sure no do you know what else i loved about the 80s well i was looking for some old photos and i um i came across one of my parents holding one of the first sony camcorders and those things are literally hilarious they look like you're an extra from a film crew or something they're like on the shoulder giant zoom and these like massive boom mics that stick right at the front with a full vhs cassette on the side that goes in and then all these weird like knobs and stuff for like yeah random shit that doesn't really make any sense it's unbelievable isn't it and when you think about it these days that we literally you know everybody has a a film camera in their in their pockets you know we just carry it around and it's a secondary function of something else as well on our phones you know oh god yeah could you could you imagine having to carry a shoulder a giant shoulder bag with a camera on it. Just You'd to have to a... really, really want to capture a moment, wouldn't you, <laughs> to, to be bothered? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, who who ever took those anywhere but right outside their door? Yeah, in the back like, garden. Oh, I, yeah, I, I know, like, I know someone. I know someone. We, we recently, um, for my parents, dug out some old 
home video footage from the 80s of, of my my dad had filmed us on holiday with the aforementioned massive i really remember it used to come with a flight case you know it was like a yeah. big thing like a bazooka style thing and yeah. um and and he he was filming it like he was filming a documentary all you hear in this is like dad dad let me have a go like, shut up matt i'm filming and then he's filming trees and he's zooming in on birds and and yeah i think he even zoomed in on some girls on the beach once and it was all quite quite sort of i think it's that the hidden tapes it's funny it's funny isn't it how but how that kind of product like makes you act in a certain way do you know what i mean like if you have a big sort of film studio style camera that's how you shoot your film if you've got a throwaway phone device and and you know you can film as much as you want and edit as much as you want then you just film everything and and i think there's a great product idea there we need to create something where you can put your phone inside a giant like pretend vhs <laughs> yeah, oh <God. laughs> and then the quality of video yeah. content i think would go through yeah. the roof because it was just that whole like like matt just said they're like zooming and zo- zooming in and zooming oh. out and literally nothing and like the camera just swinging around and like blurry and stuff and <laughs> just people didn't know what they were doing they're just like so wowed by the fact that they were holding something and filming something that they didn't really yeah. care what they were filming exactly Amazing. but it is, it's that technology i suppose because it was around that sort of time that technology was really and i guess you know you could argue that all through time technology has been introduced but if you talk about our kind of modern tech that's when it started coming into the home you know like you could make your own films which you couldn't do before that you know you couldn't film anything before mm-hmm. the, the big handy cams came out and um i don't know i think it was just like this era of i, I mean i looked up some of those tomorrow's worlds ep- episodes and, and you know you see like one i sent to you guys which i didn't watch before i sent but there's this guy like talking on a phone which is one of those old handheld phones with the cord going into his pocket which is then attached to like a radio <laughs> mic and <laughs> yeah. and, and you know star trek and you've got all these things that you know I, I remember an advert for like hp or something that had them using like a tablet on top of like mount everest or something and and it just all this stuff that you now take for granted that's come around yeah. in a much more kind of usable way as people have understood how to kind of interact with these products and then the flip side of the films and stuff where it's like oh yeah by like 2000 and 10 we'd be like on the moon and you know flying around buildings and all that sort of stuff it's it's interesting where's where's all that stuff what's happened to that i was thinking you know when i was a kid i used to look up to my dad and think oh he's not got much hair by the time (laughs) by the time (laughs) back in the 80s (laughs) he's got even less now he had a great mustache though but that's for another episode um (laughs) but um i remember thinking by the time i'm grown up that's cool, man. They're going to laser some hair back onto me or I just, you know, it's whatever. You know, here I am. You can do that. Paddy, Paddy. Well, then you Paddy's can. done that. He's had yeah, the hair can. implants. I think it's an option nowadays. Yeah, but I, I just wanted to, I wanted lasers and just, like, <laughs> Laser. I just didn't even yeah. want it to be a thing. I just thought, there's so many things that I thought by the time I'm all grown up, you know, that well, would th- be a thing. When you thought of 2020 in your, he- in your head in so the 80s. futuristic. Yeah, it was like the future, wasn't it? Like really, as in like flying cars and, you know, and all of that. It was like, do you remember the comic 2000 AD? I used to read that a lot. I think that was more 90s, yes. but that was like, you know, that was like yeah, 90. Two, 2010 and like you were living in Mega City One and, you know, it's like extreme violence and all this kind of stuff. I don't know. It's... it's um. Yeah, it's definitely weird. A, I, th- I think they had quite a pessimistic look, you know, outlook, didn't they, of what the dystopian. future... Dystopian. Or, yeah, it was all dystopian, sort yeah, of... Yeah, I love a bit Big of Brother style. Yeah, a bit of Orwell, kind of... I think one of the one of the things that, that surprises me about that decade as well, I remember, like... So we didn't have, like, DVDs and stuff back then. We had VHS, right? And that's what we used to... And I remember when I first got a DVD player... I was like, I don't like this. It's too clear. It's yeah, like, I, I remember the, that. I miss I, the I miss the old fuzziness of my literally. Of my VHS. I, I was watching TV last night and I was thinking that exact thing. Just then, I was like, I like this TV, but it just feels a bit too crisp for me. Crisp. <laughs> no, right. yeah, oh, and that is the sign that you were a, a child of the eighties. But there was there was formats like okay, so VHS was awful format, you know. But there was laser discs there was um you know betamax and stuff all of these formats were were better and all of these products were better but 
you know it was almost like the space race it was like which one are we going to get into people's homes like the quickest basically yeah and then, and then once they are those just it doesn't matter if they're the best format or not you know they they're the ones that are going to be widely sold and even like records i remember getting records i remember getting records on the back of cereal packets in the 80s like really really thin kind of flexi ones off the back of like a, a cornflake packet but you know why were we listening to records? Because there were CDs and stuff, you know, it's, invented. It's, like, well, right yeah, in, I guess CDs came out, didn't they, in the 80s? It was like late 80s or something. Yeah, I think it? it was like, yeah. Can I'd like, say that's something that's inspired like my my like product career as well. Like, you know, like it's one of the stories I always think back to is like Betamax and VHS and you know, Walkmans and Discmans and all that sort of stuff. It's just or that Blockbuster and Netflix recent more recently. Yeah, it is Blockbuster and Netflix. But it's it's that it's that. I, I think Blockbuster and Netflix is slightly different. I think when yeah. you look at something like VHS and Betamax, where you had Betamax, which was a better product, but it wasn't sold well and it wasn't explained well. I think that relates back to a lot of the kind of the product stuff that I've seen over the last sort of 10 years. It, it's, it, it doesn't, you know, you have to have a good product. And I, I think like anyone doesn't stand by that should personally be shot, but it's not enough. You also need to be able to know how to explain it. You need to make it easy to use and you need to be able to very clearly highlight the purpose of it and, and get it into people's psyche. And, and I think that's something that's always kind of stuck with me is that kind of, it, we've seen it a lot over the last few years where there's this kind of, it doesn't matter if something's better, it has to be, you know, pushed out there in the right way. It has to be communicated properly. And VHS and Betamax is basically exactly that story. They just, you know, VHS for a load of marketing stuff it, to explain the product yeah. and it's make it easy to use for people. So that's marketing. it, that's it. And I think back in those days as well, you know, there was less disruption. So it's like, if you get your product widely adopted by people, that's it. You know, you've got the monopoly for the next sort of 10, 20 years, maybe, you know, which is how long VHS is. Well, because, you know, there's these days you could have an app or something digital, you know, the turnaround is a lot quicker and you can disrupt something, you know, something could come along tomorrow if someone had enough money to say, right, I'm doing a new version of... I'm going to be be controversial. I'm going to be controversial and disagree slightly. I, I think disruptions always happened. I don't think, because I, 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 it's one of those like little the things. Of disruption, though. I don't know. Changed. I think I think when a new technology comes out or something happens, there's always disruption of existing kind of structures. You know, there's lots of lots of things you could look at, like cars disrupting railroads, and and you know, I I think yeah, you're probably right. I think it's the rate of disruption, but it always there's always part of me inside that's pained slightly when it's like, oh, you know, this is the generation that disrupts, and and actually arguably there was probably more disruption in the industrial revolution than there was today in some respects because of the drastic change it had on everyday life i don't know i feel like some of our disruption isn't as disruptive in the actual sense of impact it has on people what do you think i think it's more i think it's more about the how tangible kind of products and stuff are these days and and the fact that if you if everybody is using a format for something you know a product for something like everybody's got a cd player everyone's got a record player you know that's that's how people are going to consume stuff whereas now you know we consume stuff on all kinds of different devices can do the same thing i can listen to music on my tv i can listen to it on my microwave probably you can listen to it on my phone my car (laughs) whatever you know they've all got you know and and the the service or the distribution or the product that serves that is is different so it could be through itunes it could be through spotify whatever it could be through a completely disruptive one which comes along tomorrow and just says actually you know this is this is how you're going to listen to this now you know do people we're not forced to keep using the same products, which might not be the, the, the best product these mm. days, you know, because everything is so much more digital and there's so much more choice now. now yeah. What, what the people, I don't think they have the same lasting power as they used to. Mm. No, you know. It's the no. same with music and stuff as well. I don't think, I find it hard to imagine some of the bands that are out now would still be around in 20 years. I just, yeah. I, I feel like is it, we're, we're a bit of a throwaway generation, I think. Yeah. It's a transient thing, isn't it? I reckon, I reckon because the barrier, the barrier to entry is so low now. Like, you know, even if you look at like the app store when that came out and, you know, there was like a a couple of hundred apps on there 
and at first that was the big gold rush and then you know it, yeah there was it, the fart it, app wasn't there and it was the big gold rush yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly and, <laughs> and everyone's got this amazing piece of tech with like a camera and it's got an yeah, accelerometer and we're, and we're the fart it, app generation yeah exactly yeah, yeah. all, every, 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 all yeah. everyone wants to do is just make it fart for a quid <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I'd invented that. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> remember downloading it. Oh, I'm like, but I think, I yes, think I'll it's... pay 59p for the squelchy one. <laughs> Upgrade. I guess, I guess it's interesting though, isn't it? Because really, is there much difference in the monopolies these days? It's just different monopolies. Like Apple, you could argue, has a monopoly over devices and content in a certain certain demographic. And, you know, you could argue that yeah, that's true. Microsoft's got a monopoly over an operating system. So that's two platforms. So yeah. I think... I think it's it's really interesting this is probably a deeper longer conversation when i'm not feeling so sleepy but like um i think it, it's just if anything i take away from this it's like humans remain pretty consistent and it's just all these other things outside of there there's always that grab for power or grab for dominance and and i think now it's harder to get it but when you get it it's it's in some respects worse i mean like look at amazon for like controlling deliveries and that type of market and yeah i think i think it's, it's crazy it's, yeah i remember using amazon back in the day like mm. it was such a simple shop for buying books <laughs> and now it's just it's insane isn't it well yeah it's it is it is some of it some of this i really like obviously i like i love the advances of tech mm. and obviously use a lot of it but some of it i do miss i, I miss sort of some of the old school you know, the whole VHS conversation we just had, like one thing I really miss is going to the video shop. And, yes, like, we had this chat video. the other day, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. And yeah. I could spend hours in there and it, you know, sometimes it was an activity. My parents used to just take me, <laughs> take just, us to the VHS shop. Just drop off there. <laughs> yeah, and be like, okay, you've got three hours, choose like five VHS videos. And we'd just spend ages looking through and reading yeah. them. And, yeah. the, and the, th the funny thing is, and I, I know we chatted about this the other day, Dom, which was like, if you, it was a serious decision, right? Because you'd maybe be borrowing this video, you know, for a week or whatever, or, you'd, mm. or a few videos at once. If you pick a dud one, you know, you've, you've only got yourself to blame, really. So you've got to put your, and you, it's not like you could whip up IMDb on your phone back then and say, oh, hang on a minute, this one's only got four stars. You know, that's going back on the shelf. You'd have to thoroughly investigate the uh, the cover artwork of the video cassette. You know, you'd have to weigh it up. You'd probably have a little bit of a short list that you walk around the shop with. You know, and it was a lot. It was a lot different then. Whereas now, if we switch on a crappy movie on Netflix, what are we going to do? Ten minutes in, no, I'm not. This is crap. You know, I'm going to I'm going to switch this yeah. off. You know, exactly. So it's, yeah, it's choice, we just isn't it? We just throw it away. So yeah. I think when you bought that, when you got the VHS rentals, you were like, oh, please be good. <laughs> yeah. and, and, also, and also, you wouldn't know whether the, the cassette would actually work when you got it home. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of the time, yeah. be, someone would have spilt something on it or it would just be really yeah, it'd be, worn out. It'd be or, jumping or, I think, I think yeah, also, or you'd have to rewind it. It also made you... It, it made you more independent in four, I think, because this kind of connectivity is amazing. Like number one, you can't beat the browsing experience of a shop. It's it's no. it's on so many levels. It's it's kind of visual. It's tactile. It's all it. those types of things. Whereas, I remember the and, last and also, one I went to. oh, come on, John. Sorry, I was just going to say, I remember Such the last an one. No, no, I, the last one I went to before video shops ended completely was like there was like a computer screen robot thing with like dvds like a menu sort mm. of thing and then it would spit out a physical dvd and that was just like the soul had gone out of it by then mm. but i think so i think it's it's no no it's i i remember those as well basically like amazon physical amazon before amazon yeah yeah but, yeah. but i think like people now just like i asked my brother like uh, where should we go for dinner? And he's like, oh, I'll just check on TripAdvisor and whatever comes up top, that's where he'd choose to go to dinner. And I think there's this kind of like sheep herd mentality towards choosing stuff that this access to information yeah. gives you. Whereas in the old days in the video shop, it was like, oh my God, I hope this is good. This cover looks amazing. I'm not going to actually be influenced in <laughs> yeah. any other way apart from like just some general gut feeling that this is going to be the most immense film ever. <laughs> and you give more stuff a go. I think, yeah. I think today yeah. it's really easy to get stuck into a pigeonhole of content that's for you you know like for instance when we talked about this podcast oh what do we tag it as a business on you know is it going to get many 
any type of content going to get random listeners or do you have to be in a genre that there's an algorithm that spits out this is what you're going to like and then if if you if it, a, all it knows what you like how do you know if you like anything else you know there are 1980s vhs enthusiasts uh... <laughs> <laughs> virtual yeah. reality is the next thing um, the virtual reality every, rental experience you made a good point there i feel like now everything has to almost be perfect yeah and there is like the things being a bit shit just aren't acceptable <laughs> as they used to be yeah. whereas you know part of the fun was the fact that they were a bit shit because you know you just you know it was a bit of fun wasn't it yeah, yeah exactly and, exactly we've we've just got too much choice these days not enough montages and you know the format of media that we consume is too high definition <laughs> and too reliable <laughs> yeah and definitely. we need to travel back so i've got a question for you of all the 80s films that you can remember what would you say was your top one of your top ones i know this is a very difficult question because i feel like there are a lot so many hmm. is there a standout one though that's a tough one who wants to go i remember that? for me because I, well, I think there was, I mean, obviously there were so many, but one I remember as a kid growing up was big. Yeah. Just Tom Hanks. His, just yeah. love Tom Hanks. I just thought this guy's awesome. Also, Soltan. at the time, I was like, oh, I want to be big. <laughs> yeah, Sultan. <laughs> Sultan. Yeah, and I, yeah, I remember just thinking. <sighs> yeah. I found one of those machines on the pier yes. in Brighton recently. Yeah, it didn't take me anywhere, though, or make me small again. Oh. No, but did it? It pumped out a Zoltan card, though, right? It did, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I put it on your desk, didn't I? Do you remember? Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite film, John? Come on. Rocky Four is like I think oh. the absolute ultimate. And I was I was saying this to Matt the other day. I was boring him with my facts that Rocky Four <laughs> I think is something like thirty four percent montage. So it's like <laughs> in that is film, that recorded by like, you or is that is that a stat? <laughs> no, from... no. I'll find you the blog post. Amazing. Um, but, but basically, there is five to ten minutes of dialogue before a song kicks in and starts to tell you what's going on in the story. <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's just the best. And it's like, it's the perfect film. It's like an hour and a half long, you know, and it's, and I love how weirdly like 80s political it is as well. Like, mm. it's so, like, starts off with two boxing gloves, one, one painted with the Soviet flag and the other is like a, an American one, and they just explode, you know, and it's, um, and the speech at the end as well, you know. No, oh, that, well, that, if I can change, yeah. <laughs> and you can change, <laughs> translator guy is just amazing, you know, it's just like, yeah it's, it's amazing it, it's, it's it, amazing it's such a big bold political statement of a film you know that's just so stupidly brilliant as well and the uh, soundtrack as well oh just, the soundtrack yeah i was got like to survivor it. and yeah i was listening to it the other day sometimes i get in the car as well and just blast out a bit of the rocky four soundtrack as well it's oh um, yeah a bit of bill conti yeah i mean it's yeah i don't drive a, a fancy sports car like rocky does uh, at the peak of his fame and fortune <laughs> in rocky four oh. you know but you oh, do in your head on. No, come yeah. on even if you're driving down the in the road and you see max and you're when just I'm, thinking this is the <laughs> windows down when i'm burning it around the estate at 20 miles an hour in my c max with the kids seats in the back you know and i stick that on <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> there's no easy way out it's just so epic it's so epic oh. so that, that's my answer what about you matt oh it is a tough one isn't it one of, I, I there's so many and i kind of had a look through but one that i remember watching again and again and again beverly hills cop Axel oh, Foley. Yeah. I just yeah, always absolutely. remember, like, especially like as as a kid, just being like, "Yeah, you can be just completely out there and yet actually awesome." I think yeah. it's probably where I got some of my authority issues from, actually, where he's kind of going up against the sort of the LA police that are really sort of all, all sort of like prim and proper, and then he sort of turns up doing all this kind of crazy stuff and just with the mouth on him. Um, I love that about 80s cop films as well. Just the fact that it's like, this guy's a cop. You know, that guy would never be a cop. He'd never be, a, a he's not dressed like a cop, you know, but it's just this, the whole like maverick 
cop thing going on in the 80s. I it? feel like Eddie Murphy redefined those kind of that yeah. genre of movies, though, didn't he? Because yeah. I think when they, before they got him into, it was meant to be quite a serious movie. Um, and then he kind of came in and totally changed <laughs> it up to be the like, epic movie that it is. And you can't beat that soundtrack. I mean, just like, yeah. there's just so many good things about that film. Oh, you're making me actually, I feel like that needs a watch because I haven't watched it in a while. And, and one watch. other one that I'm just going to throw in there, probably a, a, a quick second Lethal Weapon. Oh, oh yeah. yes. yes. Lethal That's Weapon. Great. I was, again, that kind of the classic kind of cop buddy film is just, yeah. um, and I watched one of those again the other, other week, and it's, it's just such, it's kind of like, up there with Die Hard and all that kind of, you know, it's just this kind of classic formula. And oh, and also definitely. I love that there were no remakes back then. It was all kind of original stuff. Whereas now they're kind of like, yeah. oh, we chuck some money out and remake it. Now, like, yeah. it, feels, it feels like that was the kind of the prime mid to low budget film time where they just got some really good stories out because they couldn't rely on all the effects and everything. It just had to have some sort of soul to it. Exactly, animatronics. That's what I'm saying. Over CGI any day of the week. Does anyone oh, definitely? Does yeah. anyone remember the film uh, with um, Eddie Murphy and um, oh, what's his name? The guy. I yeah, think... you're talking about another f- 48, 48 hours. 48 hours. Yeah, that was a, yeah. that was a genius one as well. 48 hours. That was classic. Amazing. Absolute classic. I'm trying to think who the other guy was. Um, he was an absolute. Nolte, someone... Yes, Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. Nolte. Yeah. Brilliant. Legend. Well, there you go. There's our reviews of 80s films. <laughs> oh, man. If you Tips offer me a job choosing... tomorrow, I'd definitely take it. <laughs> Tips for choosing how to choose your best VHS movies in the video shops within three hours. <laughs> <laughs> and the best format to stick with for the next 10 to 20 years for your video cassettes. Aren't you uh, glad you tuned you... in this week? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. We could, uh, so I feel well. like we could just talk all day we could, about we 80s. Could, I think yeah, we're gonna we should to call it a day. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that was episode three. Of- episode three. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I really thought that went well. I loved it. <laughs> I was totally <laughs> in the zone. <laughs> totally in the 80s zone. Oh, I'll tell you what, just before we end, Top Gun, the latest one's coming out this year, isn't it? So stay tuned for that. Yeah, what, for a, what, a film review? Is that- <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, oh let's do it. Road. The Pack Unleashed Film Friday. Corona oh, is probably should definitely the release date back to another 35 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been since the first one? Oh, God. So long. The Top Gun 2 from the house. Is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lockdown oh, edition. Oh, Days of Thunder. Oh, my God, they're all coming back. Oh, now. my God. Days, Days, Days of, Thunder. of Thunder. How did I forget about Days of Thunder? It's what got me into cars. Oh, oh. Oh, Days so of, I absolutely love the fear, that film. The fear of driving through the smoke and then overcoming it at the end. I mean, what a story. Oh, mate. Oh. That is definitely up there. One of my all-time favourites. Right, anyway, I'm going to stop now. Right. Okay, cool. Thanks for tuning in. When can everyone else tune in again? In a couple of weeks' time. And when, you say? On a, On a Tuesday. 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 Make sure you subscribe. Send links to your friends. Just get involved. Talk to us. Please, please. Yeah. I tell you what, if we don't hear from you or don't get enough listeners, we're just going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing it. It's going to be 80s <laughs> yeah, right. every every other week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's bye for now. Bye, Zs. Bye. <laughs>